Okay, so now we have the battery charged, we can get the craft turned on for the first time and get the craft activated. A couple of things you need to do before you get started though that is quite important. The first one is, is when the craft is in transit, there is, you see this little rubber block here, it's like a transit lock. It's really like, you know, when you buy a washing machine and inside the back of the washing machine, there's big clamps you have to remove. It's only for transit and you only do it once. So we just remove that block out. It doesn't need to go back in. Just pull it out, put it in your box and be done with it. The other thing that we will be taking off and on is this gimbal clamp here. It stops the gimbal, which is like, which is stabilized. In fact, if I just unclip this and take it off, the gimbal, is let's pull that off as you can see the gimbal obviously moves but it's also rubber mounted as well and what that bra plastic bracket does is keeps it um from getting damaged in transit if you were to maybe check it onto a plane or something like that but you must never turn the craft on with that bracket still on otherwise what's going to happen is the gimbal's going to try and move and calibrate itself and you'll get a motor overload protection or worse still you could actually damage the motor so you definitely don't want to do that so before you ever turn it on remove the gimbal clamp so we've removed the gimbal clamp and we want to put the battery in the battery actually does go in a certain way i don't know if you can see that on camera that side's higher than that side that side is the bottom if you try and put it in the other way it just won't go in similar like this Put it in like that. Now you should always uh, turn on the controller before the craft. You know what, it probably doesn't matter, but if you're old school radio control, you should never have the craft turned on without the controller on. So, first of all, let's pull that back like that. Uh, to turn the controller on, which is the same as the craft, you've got two buttons on the front here. One is actually the home button to send it home, the other one's the power button. And what we do is it's quite simple. You push it once and then within two seconds you push it and hold it. So if you watch what I do and then you can watch the little lights, so I push it once and push and hold it. You see the light scroll, you'll hear the beep. And now that controller is on. Same with the craft. Push it once and push it and hold it. You hear all the fans powering up. While it's doing its little initially initialization, it's a good idea not to touch it because the gimbal will do a wee calibration as you can see it moving there. You must let it do that. Low battery warning. <laughs> that's interesting because it is charged. Um, okay, so that's that done. And then we have obviously the controller. Now what we will now cover, in fact, one thing I'll just touch on actually, um, I've got to mention this, um, as you'll notice the props are not on the craft. Never ever ever have your craft turned on with the props on unless you're about to fly. Now there's no reason why the craft might fire into life, but you never know, you could be working on the craft, someone else touches your controller, arms and motors and boom, believe me those blades are sharp and you'll do yourself an injury. So um, all, if you have your props on, take them off, if they're not on, don't put them on. Okay, so now you will be on your welcome screen and a little bit like, you know, when you get an iPad, you've got to tell it what language you want to talk in and things like that. So obviously, as there's only one I can understand, we're on English. So click on start. Click on next. Obviously, there's a user agreement. They just basically want you to admit if you're going to use this irresponsibly that it's got nothing to do with them. I'm going to cover all about like drone health and safety and stuff like that when um, when I come back on. Uh, so, uh, sorry, at the end of the video. Now, um, it will require Wi-Fi to do because what it's going to do is it's going to connect to the DJI servers to activate. So we look for the local network. This is mine here. If you're a Star Trek fan, that will make sense. Uh, and we just whoop, actually got to put your password in. Okay, so enter your password, click on done, connect. And there we go. So we can now click on next. Uh, set time, so we are... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Come on. Sorry, I'm looking at this at a bit of a funny angle, so the camera fits in, so I can't quite... Here we go, London and Dublin. Welcome Dublin. Here are the points for the Eurovision Song Contest. There we go. So now this is the part um, 
If you haven't already got a DJI account, you need to create one. If you already own a DJI Craft, you will already have this already. Um, if you have any issues at this stage where, well, obviously if you're logging in, it's simple, email address, your password, boom, logged in. Um, if you haven't got a lot, if you haven't already got a, um, a DJI account, then obviously you can sign up. If you do have any issues at this point of signing up, just simply, um, Go into your computer and look, and do it manually on their website and then come back. So I'm just going to log in and, and oh, put your password in, press go, sign in. There we go. So we're now at, uh, signed in and we're now going to activate the craft. Now you only do this once and this assigns the craft to you. Go! Oh, very exciting. Device activated. Available now. And welcome to the DJI Go app. Now, if you are already familiar with DJI Craft from the Phantom, pretty much Phantom 3, Inspire 1, I suppose Mavic onwards, uh, you'll be familiar with literally all of this. So if you want to be honest with you, you probably don't need to know much more apart from skipping forward to the IMU calibrations. What I will do actually, although this video will be encompassing everything, what I will do is I will break this video down into little sections. So for example, if you just wanted to see what the uh, what it was like to cal what it, how to calibrate the IMU, you'll be able just to skip to that section and just watch that video. So if you look out, I will have obviously have a Phantom 4 playlist on my YouTube channel and you will obviously be able to um, see all the different sections. Uh, and if you great guys are supportive and buy from me or subscribe to me or support me through my Patreon channel, then I'll be able to bring you lots more.